Cambridge Ideas, transforming tomorrow. I've always loved the boat race. You've got two of the oldest universities in the world, having competed since 1829. And yet we know very little about the boat race crews that participate in the race. So what is that like? What goes on behind these Camish blue doors on the River Cam? My name is Mark Durand. I work as an ethnographer. What it means is that I study people by living with them full time um, under their conditions and living life much the way they do. Now what I'm really interested in are the way human beings operate in high performance contexts, very stressful environments. What's the human experience like? What makes them tick? I try to live as much as I can like they do. So I wake up early in the morning, I go to training sessions with them. And so I tried very hard to integrate as much as I could. And often, almost on a daily basis, mopping the floors. Okay, so what does it take to create a successful rowing crew? Oh! <laughs> What's really interesting is that the it seems that the eight fastest individual rowers don't necessarily make the fastest eight or the fastest boat. It's not because we lack objective performance data. You put rowers on a rowing machine or you have to lift weights and it's very easy to observe what they're capable of doing. But line up all your eight strongest people and put them in a boat and they'll, they'll likely not comprise the most fast possible boat. But these people are good but what makes them good makes them difficult too. They're intuitive, they've often been right in the past, they'll think they'll be right tomorrow, they can't help being what they are. So where do you row in a blue boat? What's your seat? So you're on, you're on bow side, right? So. Yeah, uh, been rowing five seat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know what my job to do in the boat is, and it's to yeah. go really hard mm -hmm. uh, for longer than anybody else. These guys are competing for seats in the boat, usually about 40 of them, for only eight seats in the blue boat. The only way to compete effectively is to make the boat go fast, and the only way to make the boat go fast is to collaborate perfectly with the very same people they're competing with. It almost requires a schizophrenic frame of mind. Go! At the same time, rationally speaking, they're not dysfunctional. That actually, this state of being in tension of having to compete and collaborate at the same time gets the best out of these individual horsemen. Release easily! Release easily! Today I'm hoping to do something uh, a little bit special. One thing Cambridge University and Oxford University are well known for is the boat race. Now what I want to do is to show you that there are things we can learn from high performance rowing mm. using the Cambridge example mm. that are incredibly relevant mm. for business. I'm not just an ethnographer. In fact, I spend a lot of my time advising businesses how to work with difficult people, people that are hugely talented but very difficult to work with. Pick your best eight, not your eight best. Now, what does it mean for business? Well, occasionally it might mean that you will need to trade off some technical competence to gain social intelligence, to be able to get more out of a team as a whole. Yeah, well, everybody is under the same pressures. You know, when you go to work, you, you leave your own ethics at the door. <laughs> you shouldn't, but you often do. Well, sometimes <laughs> you have to, or you'd be out of a job, wouldn't you? It actually makes sense from a client perspective, too. If I'm looking for legal advice and I come to you, I probably cannot tell whether you are 94% competent or 99% competent. But I can tell whether I like you. What makes them good makes them difficult too. If you're going to hire the most talented individuals in an industry, they will be difficult. So you've got to make some allowances for difficult behavior. And these people can be intimidating, much like the guys in the Cambridge Rome crew can be. 
And I find it helpful to remember that they're actually quite vulnerable. Um, they have their own insecurities, their own little hang-ups. And uh, I find that, I find it somewhat comforting. <laughs>